It's realizable resolves all potential anomalies between concurrent transactions, ensuring that transactions are executed as if they had been run sequentially. But does it mean that you should stick with serializable and forget about other transaction isolations at all? No. Watch the video until the end to find out why. Alrighty, first things first, let's start with the definition. A serializable transaction isolation level emulates a serial transaction execution for all concurrent transactions, as if they were run one after another. However, applications using this transaction isolation should be prepared to retry some transactions due to serialization failures. This level resolves all of the anomalies we've discussed in previous lessons, such as dirty read, non-repeatable read, phantom read, and last but not least, writes queue. In this video, we won't go over all of them again. Please, for that, watch previous videos in this course. In this tutorial, we'll focus only on write skew anomaly. Okay, time to talk about write skew anomaly. We already captured this concept on the previous lesson, so now we'll just make a quick recap, and then I will show how serializable transaction isolation level solves write skew anomaly. So, first thing first, regarding the application that we have. So, this application for doctors in the hospital, which allows them to go off shift. So basically doctors are on call and if there are some doctors are left and doctor feel unwell so doctor can go off shift but if there are nobody else doctor can go off shift this is the logic so and uh, regarding right queue anomaly it happens when two or more concurrent transactions like this one with doctor one and this one with doctor two uh, reading overlapping data, this uh, query and this query. And after that, uh, make decisions based on the data they read. So this doctor see that doctor 2 is still on shift, and this doctor see that doctor 1 is on shift. So both of them make decisions to go off shift. And write back changes, so these two operations. And uh, now I will show you in Postgres with repeatable read transaction isolation level that when they write back changes, application kind of works not as expected and both of the doctors go off shift and nobody else is left in the hospital, which is bad. And with realizable, this should work. So let's see the issue in Postgres for uh, repeatable read transaction isolation level. Okay, let's reproduce the issue. So firstly, we insert two shifts so now if i will do select from shifts we see that two doctors are on shift and uh, this part begins so we start transaction with a repeatable read transaction isolation level then we check if doctor 2 is on shift yes doctor 2 is on shift so we can go off shift and not commit yet then another doctor, approximately on the same time, comes in, starts his transaction, checks if doctor 1 is on shift. So, sorry that I haven't mentioned, is this part. So, here's the overlapping data. And uh, he decides also to go off shift, as far as he sees that doctor 1 is uh, on shift at the moment. Uh, it didn't copy. Let me try again. Yeah, so it went off shift, and then Dr. 1 goes off shift, and Dr. 2 goes off shift. And if I will execute select query now, we can see that both of the doctors went off shift, and the issue with uh, right queue was reproduced. Now we'll have a look how it works with serializable. Okay, yeah, let's firstly clean the table and create a new one. So we'll use drop. Uh, they could have used truncate also, but let's use this one for simplicity. Then we insert shifts again and uh, let's start transaction, this one, but not as a repeatable read, as a serializable. Then also doctor checks 
if there's somebody on shift and he see that Doctor 2 is on shift, which is good, so he decides to go off shift. Doctor 2 does the same, he starts his transaction, uh, this part, then does select, check if Doctor 1 is on shift, and then decides to go off shift. So let's do this. It does the select query. Since the Doctor 1 is on shift, all good. Let's go off shift. And then Doctor 1 does commit. All good, it happened. And then Doctor 2 does commit. And it doesn't allow him to go off shift because serializable noticed that uh, there is some concurrency issue. He said it could not serialize access due to read write dependencies among transactions. So this transaction should be read write. Uh, to finish it, we can use commit or rollback. I will use commit. And uh, let's check again from uh, shifts. We see that doctor one uh, is off shift, so we are not able to proceed further. So if I will start serializable again, and we'll check if Dr. 1 is on shift, we see that there is no such rows. So Dr. 2 won't be able to go off shift. And issue with right skew is solved by serializable transaction isolation. Hope it was useful. All right, I suppose now it's crystal clear that serializable is amazing in terms of the reliability. It solves all potential anomalies that we've discussed but unfortunately it's still not a silver bullet because strong level of reliability comes with performance overhead therefore let's compare performance of serializable with other transaction isolation levels this amazing article that was written by Mati Lichowski nicely shows us the performance difference between all the transaction isolations let's go over it firstly he used threads parameter to execute different tests with different number of threads and by threads he meant the number of concurrent transactions so he started from 100 and uh, and finished with 1600 the test that he performed firstly simple insert inserts a new row into the table and he also left uh, code so we can go and have a look on simple insert so it looks as follows very simple query next one single row update it updates a single row so all of the concurrent transactions will try to update the same row and he was prepared for serialization failure on repeatable read and serializable so in this case he will do the retry let's have a look on this one yeah as you can see we try to execute the transaction if it goes wrong we try to execute it again but if it breaks we finished okay the next is select for update single row he uses select for update which logs a row until the update is finished select for update skip logged it's very similar to select for update but uh, this statement skip rows if the update is not finished select for update with foreign key the same as over here but for foreign key so it locks as well the table to which we have the foreign key okay so let's go to the results i think we can skip each of them and we'll just go to the final one which is this one so as we can see for simple insert single row update and the rest of them the results are almost the same except of the random row update here serializable is five times longer uh, in comparison to other transaction isolation levels but results can be different if you have different schema different number of records initial in the database and other operations but i think this chart is nicely show us with what kind of overhead we can face if we will use serializable transaction isolation so I hope this chart will help you to understand the overhead with which you can face. All right, I hope this course was useful for you. If you have some questions, feel free to ask them in comment sections below. That's all I've got, and I'll see you in the next one.